Well, hello neighbors. Welcome to my deck. I'm John, your whiskey neighbor. And uh, we're about to head into the May long weekend here in Canada. And I really wanted to get just a, a thought out there in case you're looking last minute for a bourbon or a whiskey to think about. Uh, this one is Jim Beam. Pretty easy for, uh, bourbon to find, but this is their single barrel expression. Well, thanks for staying with me. And like I said in the intro, uh, today, heading into a, a long weekend, which now the weather looks like it's gonna be pretty good, I wanted to talk to you about um, Jim Beam. Looks just like White Label, but it doesn't look just like White Label because this is a single barrel expression. You know, uh, single barrels are are definitely popular. Um, uh, I think they, they uh, a, a, a cynical view would say, uh, distilleries uh, are looking for a way to charge more for the same product. Uh, but a whiskey enthusiast, I would say, I actually appreciate single barrel expressions. They do vary, uh, but I do think uh, most places uh, look to release a little nicer product um, as a single barrel than, than their standard release. They charge more for it too. Um, but I, I am a fan of single barrels still. I haven't, haven't lo they haven't lost the edge for me. So, you know, Jim Beam, uh, of course, big distillery, right? Uh, behind a lot of big names. Uh, and you, you've, if you're a fan of the show or you've been around the show a while, you know, like Knob Creek is one of my favorite that comes out of Jim Beam. Um, you know, they, they make a lot of bourbons and rye. Uh, they're a very huge, huge company for sure. Uh, a little bit about this product. You know, this is single barrel. It has been out for a number of years. I've only seen it in my neck of the woods maybe for the last couple years or so, and I haven't picked it up till recently. So it, it, it's new to me. Um, I've spent a little bit of time with it. You know, it doesn't really say much on it, uh, except that it is, you know, a single barrel and it has the barrel number. This is JB. 8209, uh, but it's released at a little higher proof uh, at 47.5% or 95 proof. Um, other than that, you know, I don't really know. I mean, they make a, a deal on the back and if you go to their website, you know, it talks about only 1% of the barrels that go into their regular Jim Beam expression are good enough to be their single barrel release. Well, that's kind of marketing talk, but I do think that they've probably had someone, uh, you know, sipping through, uh, barrels, well, I really hope they have. And, and I would say this barrel must stand out from, from the regular Jim Beam barrels in that, okay, this has, you know, the, the, um, the length of flavor, nose, taste profile that we're going to, that their, their non-single barrel, like, you know, they've come across barrel, it might be, yeah, this is good, but it's kind of missing a nose. Oh, this one has a nose. That's how I imagine it. I have, uh, never been trained or tapped on the shoulder to be someone selecting barrels. Uh, that sounds like a good job. Anyways, uh, so a little bit about this whiskey, like I said, it's really higher, 95 proof or 47.5%. Or uh, it is a single barrel product. And, and where I am, um, it hasn't been discovered yet in the sense that the price on it is really quite tight. I, I picked this up, not on sale, uh, tax, everything included. I am in Alberta, which little usually have some pretty decent prices, uh, you know, for 39 bucks. So like that's a regular stocked item at 39 single barrel. Um, that's a pretty good price. A uh, little bit about the liquid in here. I don't know uh, an age on it. I wasn't able to find, and that would be one way to elevate this product just a little more. I think put, put an age stamp on it. Um, but uh, I, I know this is the regular, the, the mash bill, as I understand it on this one, is more around that 13% rye. So that'd be about, okay, do some math. 75% uh, corn, 13% uh, rye, and 12% barley. I, I, I think the rye is in my mind because it's the same mash bill as I understand it as, as Knob Creek. And I really like Knob Creek, uh, and I really like their single barrel releases. And what I've heard, I read it once on a site, can't confirm it that you know, uh, Jim Beam tends to get the barrels that are in their, in their regular expression that are kind of the outside or whatnot that might be subject to, to um, a little more variation in heat and whereas Knob Creek gets the core 
you know, the Baker, the all of those other ones get the core. I don't know if that's true. It's kind of fun to talk about. But in here, 13% rye, 75 corn, 12 barley, I think. Um, and it is a single barrel. I got nothing else to say about it. Uh, let's see what it, uh, what it smells and tastes like. This nose is, uh, you know, very uh, characteristic of bourbon, right? We're going to get into our uh, little corn sweetness, but for me, even some vanilla. Uh, boy. You know, maybe a little bit of fruit in there, but it's not fruity. That's not the first thing. I actually get the caramel and then maybe a little bit of a riper fruit. It's not sharp or deep enough to really get into a cherry, so maybe it's a... It's not pithy enough to be an apricot. I don't want to keep telling you what it's not. I will say for 47.5%, I've had it open for a little while. So uh, there's alcohol there. It is a younger whiskey, but it doesn't doesn't singe or burn and doesn't immediately strike uh, alcohol. I think the last uh, bourbon I was I was well, I was a Tennessee whiskey I was talking to you about really had that chemical acetone. And it's there, but it's hidden. Uh, thankfully, the first thing I do get are are some caramel toasted, a little bit of oak. And a fruit, but it's really a generic fruit, like a juicy fruit, fruit cup, fruit syrup. Not fruity, but that's kind of, it's really tough for me to identify one particular uh, approach. So, nose is fairly simple, not terribly complex, not really strong into anything. It's not really strong char or barely or buttery. It's just got, you know, the edges of all that. A little bit of nut in there, just a bit. And, and you know, now that I've, I've kind of been nosing it without drinking or, or doing anything else, just really trying to, trying to get at it, then I, you, you are going to get that it's younger. You are going to get that it's, uh, it's got a little bit of that um, early, early alcohols that I, that I do think with time in barrel start to get subtracted out, right? Um, that's, that's what it's missing. If it had a little more age, I think some of those secondary um, notes would come up. But nice. Cheers to the long weekend. I think this one, um, its palate, although still sprightly and youthful, so a little burning on the edges of the tongue and not really with spice, a little bit with that alcohol bite, but if you can uh, let that settle out, or if it's your second sip of the night or whatever, I actually think the, the flavor profile here will appeal to, to many people. It's um, spicy enough to be interesting, but not overpowering. Um, there's enough uh, oak in there that actually, it, 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 um, it gives you something to think about. Even, even almost a little edge or a smoke char to it, just a little edge to it. Um, I definitely get some nut to it. And now the nose is a little better. Isn't that funny? This is actually the first uh, whiskey because I want to get this out yet tonight on the Friday. Uh, so I kind of came in, set up, poured, and I did it a little too quick. Should have had a, a sip of something to sort of reset my palate. Yeah, that's pleasant. Um, that's pleasant. So... My thoughts that I really wanted to share with you, uh, really kind of feature, like this is not going to blow anyone away. This is not going to um, really bring home big awards or capture your interest on any one dimension. However, I think it gets uh, the, bo the bourbon profile really well. I, I actually like this single, but I'm very glad I found it. Uh, I mean, find it, it was not hard to find, but I mean, I'm very glad I picked it up. In fact, in my area, um, I've found that somewhere around that, you know, 47 and up, 
uh, is a, enough of a proof to start bringing the flavors that I would like. Uh, this one, for, for the price that it sits at the shelf in Alberta, it sits around, like really, I don't think I've seen it over $42 or something like that. I think I'd be hard pressed to find a, um, a, a an easier drinking, well-profiled, well-rounded um, single barrel product. Now, even with that second sip, I'm enjoying it. I like it. Um, it is too young. And and if they were to, if they really wanted to elevate this product and make it worth another ten bucks, like if that's the market they're going for, I think all they'd have to do is leave it for another, you know, three years. I don't even know what it's aged at, but but just another length of time to start that, that to really subtract out some of the negative, some of those. Um, alcohols that that uh, tend to disappear in time um, you know I, I think it would start to get a little oakier which it could use uh, the flavors are there but it could use a little more wood in it um, or a little more caramel sugars um, it's not overly sweet if you're looking for a sweet bourbon it's not certainly Knob Creek for me same mash bill same distillery is significantly sweeter even though it's the same amount of corn and same, um, that bourbon for me stands out as sweeter. This is more on that nuttier side, I would say. Um, but I like it. I, I, I do. I, right now, because it's Friday and it's the first drink of the night and I'm thinking of the weekend, I probably like it too much to give it a, a fair rating. Critically, because of its youth, uh, you know, maybe it's a three and a half. Today, uh, single barrel, priced where it is, its drinkability, for me, actually pushes it into the four star rating, which, which uh, is a, probably an undeserved high rating for it, critically. But I've been drinking, um, tasting, I shouldn't say it like drinking, but I've been tasting a fair number of whiskeys lately that I thought I liked and that were kind of in that three and a half star range. And uh, lately I've been taking, you know, like just pouring small sips. Do I want that tonight? Do I want that tonight? And I'm amazed at how many expressions um, are starting to really fall away. Expressions that I thought I kind of liked. And now they're, they're just, I don't know, they're just alcohol. And this one, I'm not deep into it, but actually has been an easy, uh, Okay, actually this flavor fits with uh, with hot wings, or this flavor fits with some chips and some TV, and this flavor fits with whatnot. Oh, look, I don't have more to offer, so I should probably stop talking and wrap it up. But um, if you haven't had uh, Jim Beam, um, then I think this is a very affordable, better than their regular product. I will say the reaction to that chemical note that I have in a little bit here is even stronger, certainly more pronounced than their regular label. Um, but just kicking up the alcohol a bit, and uh, I guess really that's all they've done. If I had a criticism as well, I, I will say the top on this thing is ridiculously small. You can't really tell, but uh, I don't mind the barrel design, but give me something I can pour out of. Thanks, guys. You guys have a fantastic long weekend. Uh, and if you haven't had it, I'd say this is worth a pour. Probably a three and a half. But today, today it's a four star. <laughs> Take care.